Let's praise the name of the Lord. Amen. We serve an awesome God. We serve a mighty God. Y'all seem like y'all ready to praise on a Wednesday night. Amen. Praise God in this house. He's worthy. He's worthy. Let's give him praise again from the, the uttermost of your heart. He's good. He's worthy. He's faithful when man hasn't been faithful to you. Amen. He's not up and down. Y'all know how we do. Some days we're talking to you. Some days we're not talking to you. Some days we like you. Other days we don't like you. Some minutes we like you. The other days we don't like you. Amen. But God always loves us. He's always faithful. He's always there. It's we who stray, not him. Let's give him praise again in this place. Amen. He's worthy. He's worthy of our praise. And you may be seated in the presence of God. Amen. So welcome everybody who came out tonight. Welcome to all of you. Thank you for those who are showing up as always on our social media platforms. If it's your first time, welcome, welcome, welcome for the first time. We are so excited about Word Wednesday. We get excited about just the word coming forth and what is to come. We all wait. Don't we always wait in anticipation on the word for Word Wednesday? Amen. So real quick, we're going to go through the announcements. I'm going to fly through them. And like I told you, soon you'll be seeing a different change. We're going to start doing um, our announcements on video and you will see them and you're going to see that coming soon. So POPC women, please mark your calendars for Thursday, October 26th at 6 30 p.m we will have our women's meeting we need all women in attendance we will have food so please make sure that you show up and it is very important because we have some dynamic things that we have to get done and some things that god wants from us please start bringing your candy so some people have already started bringing your candy bring your candy for our harvest fest y'all we have a lot going on and the bin is over there can they see it when they walk in Okay, y'all have seen it. Okay. All right, so the, uh, the bin is in the back. Please make sure we fill that up so that we can keep filling bins up because we want to make sure that our kids get food. We will, um, we will celebrate that on that Sunday before, um, har before our harvest, or what they call Halloween. So we'll celebrate it on the 29th. That's also our ministry fair. So we have a lot going on, but it is going to be fun because you're going to have the ministry fair. You're going to have a little vittles little something, and that's that's because we have the kids. So everybody will uh, partake in something to eat while they're in our ministry fair, walking around to the different ministry fairs. Oh, hey, Brother Eddie, how are you? Good, good seeing you. So we'll walk around to the uh, different tables, and you'll be able to eat, and then the kids will also get their um, bags of candy. So that's on the 29th. That's that Sunday after worship service. Amen. All right. Don't forget, bring that candy. Our spaghetti Thursday is every second Thursday of the month, 530 to 630 p.m. Our next food giveaway is Thursday. What was that date again? Ninth, November the 9th. Um, and we still need volunteers as always. We need some men to go with us because I went with them this last time to uh, the actual warehouse. Woo wee. I was through after the warehouse, okay? So make sure we need some men helping us as well. Um, so if you can help, please see Sister Kelly or MIT Sherry um, or Minister Lee to let them know that you can help. Also, new partners. Our new partners class will be Saturday, October the 28th at 9 a.m., Saturday, October 28th at 9 a.m. New partners, we're going to have a dynamic time. Bishop and I keep talking about that because we cannot wait to meet with you all. That's a time that we get to learn you, you get to learn us, and you see all about our ministry, okay? So new partners. And if you're um, a new partner and you were supposed to go to another class and you never went, we need all partners who have not gone through that. We need you to go through that class. So again, that's Saturday, October 28th at 9 a.m., and as I alluded before, that following Sunday will be a ministry fair for everybody. That's just not for new partners. That's for any and everybody to see what our ministries have to offer. Y'all know we are the body of Christ, so we, we do the work 
of Christ. Amen. He uses us to do his work. So make sure that you sign up. You know, uh, many people just want to sit in the pews. That's not God's will for us. He wants us to work. Okay. Somebody said to me, I just want to sit. That's not God's will. God's will is for you to work in the ministry. So please make sure that you sign up. If you're not working in ministry, you're not doing all God has called you for. And yes, you can, we'll, of course, you can do more than one thing because the good thing is God is growing us because you know what? Right now, we are using the same people over and over and over and over and over. And God is going to bless them because they do multiple things because they understand that we need that for the movement of our church. However, he's giving people to us to come into the church so that we can spread the wealth and we can have more people doing things and you have an effective ministry when that happens, okay? Now, God has blessed us that Prince of Peace, we move effectively, okay? We get together and we do things the way God wants us to, but he wants us to do it even more effectively. So make sure you sign up for a ministry, um, on the ministry fair, and you can do more than one ministry. Also, Breast Cancer Awareness Month. This is the Sunday that we will wear all pink on this Sunday. If you don't have pink, don't let that stop you. It does not matter. We just want to, we want a sea of pink, but if you don't have pink, do not let that stop you. We will have ribbons. Do we still have more ribbons for them or more uh, pins? Okay, so we will have pins if you just want to put the pin on. But if you want to wear pink, that would be great. Okay, so make sure that um, this Sunday we come in uh, and we're going to have a little presentation for Breast Cancer Awareness Month. Also, Christmas production. Bishop brought it to my attention that we have moved to a second sheet. Yay. I am so excited about that. Please still sign up. We still need more people. I still need more actors. I still need more people helping. So if you are interested, even if you're shy, go ahead and sign up anyway. Don't think about that. Just sign up and just step out on faith. It, we're going to have a great time, and the Christmas production is going to be magnificent. So please make sure you sign up. Also, join us every Wednesday at 6 p.m. for a year in the Bible. Didn't we have, we always have a good time. God shows up. Amen, amen. You can do that. A year in the Bible with Pastor Kia Smith and those people that come out, they come out faithfully. And then we always have somebody who shocks us and comes in. And, and we love that. We want to keep growing in that moment. So please come out at 6 p.m. to learn more about the Bible. As well, Word Wednesday at 7 p.m. with our very own Bishop, Bishop Reginald D. Smith. Y'all know we wait in great anticipation of that word that he brings. So come on out on Wednesdays. Don't stay home. Sacrifice. Come out. I promise you, you will be blessed. And before you know it, you'll look and go, oh, my gosh, look how much I have grown. Also, the conference in Leesburg, Virginia is almost there. Many men have already signed up. That's with our very own Bishop. Bishop Reginald D. Smith will be one of the uh, presenters. This is where Bishop, our Bishop, Law Dukes uh, and um, Pastor uh, Deborah Dukes, that's their church. Churches United, though, is our fellowship, okay? And this is being hosted by Churches United, which is our fellowship. And we have some dynamic speakers. Men, you have been signing up. It's probably like 12 of you going or more. 12 or more, and that's a big, big undertaking. We're proud of y'all. I love how you um, support our bishop. That's the way it's supposed to be. So, men, if you haven't registered, make sure that you register. Also, I am, we're, Bishop and I talked, um, God has just placed on my heart that we need a senior ministry, right? I'm saying, giving y'all something else to do, right? We need a senior ministry. I want to make sure that our seniors aren't getting lost 65 and up. So, but I need somebody to lead that moment, even if it's co-leaders. So think about it. I'm just throwing it out there, okay? Even if it's co-leaders, I'm throwing it out there that we need um, a leader for our senior ministry. That senior ministry, we want them to have activities. We want them to have things to go do. Just, we don't want them stagnant. We want them moving and having fun. So I need, we need yeah, we need all kinds of ideas and all of that. But the, the, the seniors, believe me, they, they'll give you some ideas. That's not what you need to worry about. We don't have shy seniors. So they will give you some ideas. I just need some leaders of that ministry. So senior ministry, if you are thinking about it and it's in your heart and something prick, but you, st you say, no, nah, no, nah, I got too much going on. You don't have too much going on. It's, it's good. God will take care of you. He'll bless you. See me, please. 
Also, um, um, are there any first time guests? Do we have any first time guests here? We got a lot of people here, but no first time guests. All right, well, give yourselves a hand clap. Last but not least, thank you for your continual giving and your tithes, your offering, and your seed. Y'all are always giving, and we are just, um, we're honored that we are at a church that's mature. Y'all, all through it during the week, and I tell you this all the time, all during the week, y'all are giving, and nobody has to go to you to say, hey, give, give. Nobody has to jump up and down, do a chili and do a skit or anything. Y'all give out of the abundance of your love for Christ and the obedience to him. So we are grateful for that. This is Word Wednesday, so your Word Wednesday sees, if you haven't paid your off, I mean your tithes, always pay that first. Then the rest of it is gravy. That's what grows up. Tithes are your obedience to God. Everything else is your harvest, is your seed so that you can get a harvest. So you can give your seed, you can give your tithes or offering online at www.princeofpeacepc.org, or you can give cash app at dollar sign P-O-P-P-C-1. You can give by square in the back with the trustee at our kiosk. You can give by envelope if you want to give by cash or check. Just raise your hand for an envelope, and we have canisters at the front of the um, church where you can give it any time during worship. As well, we have a QR code that you can scan in the back of the pews. Amen. That is it for our announcement. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we love you. We honor you. We adore you. There is no one like you. You are an awesome, mighty, wonderful, magnificent God. We are grateful for who you are. We love you, God. We honor you, God. There is no name that will ever be lifted up higher than the name of Jesus. There is no name that will be lifted up higher than Jehovah. You're the author and finisher of our faith. You're the reason that we are here. You're the reason why we serve. You're our everything. And we are grateful, God, that you have given us our bishop that you've given us a pastor who loves you. Thank you, God, for giving Bishop Smith the vision for this place of Zion. Thank you, God, for giving him a help meet and a pastor, God, who loves you. And all it took was for her to hear the vision from the visionary that you gave to know that it shall come to pass. Thank you for a congregation who has taken hold of the vision and is working the vision. Bless them like never before, God. Bless our bishop, God, and let the blessings flow down like the oil on Aaron's beard. Let the anointing flow, God. We have a prophet as our senior leader, as our head, our founder, our visionary, that you've anointed and appointed. Let the prophecy and the oil of that prophecy fall down to the people, God. Lord, let the love and compassion flow in this place. We love you. We honor you. We adore you. We ask that you bless our bishop as he brings forth the word, God. No distractions. We bind every distraction, anything with any ill in, intent or anything that would get him off, we bind it. It is in your precious and glorious name we wait with great anticipation. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's stand and welcome our very own bishop, Bishop Reginald D. Smith. All right. Thank you all so much. You could be seated in the presence of the Lord. Just so many people in a Bible study. That, that means a lot. When you got people in Bible study, that when they, when they come to church, they come for um, me. You come to Bible study, you come for God. Amen. These godly people. Um, but we're, we're trying to do a lot, trying to grow each and every one of us. We have a lot going on. Um, God is truly blessing us. Um, God has finally gave me like the blueprint uh, for being debt free. Um, so what we gonna, we're gonna get ready to have a um, entrepreneurship uh, meeting again on how to buy your house. Um, uh, we call it a fact check. 
Um, people make up stuff. Um, I done bought a house. I know what it takes to buy one. Um, so we're going to talk about starting your business. I'm actually starting a new business at the beginning of the year. Um, I'm how to pay off your debt. So we're just going to come in here one day and just grind it out for maybe three hours um, and, and get it done. All right. um, you, need, you need to know people. You need to know God and you need to know people. Got to change your circle. If it's not working in the circle that you're in now, you got to change your circle and do something different. Um, look at your neighbors. It takes money to do it, though. It takes money. It takes money. That's why you have to be a 100% tither because God gives seed to the sower. All right? He all, if you tithe, he's always going to give you money back. It always come. It always come. Um, you never have to worry about that. Um, but what you think and you have and what you want, there's much, much more that God wants for you. And so um, um, January the 1st, uh, we're doing our New Year's this year. Um, I need 30 people. We're going to pay this roof off. So I'm going to need 30 people January the 1st. Um, and don't, don't want you all to, to start crying. I can't do it. So once you say, I can't do it, you out of the question of God blessing you. Once you say, I, I don't know how I'm going to do it, then you're saying, God, you can't do it for me. Can I get an amen? And so I'm going to need 30 people to do $1,024. All right? In January, New Year. So that means you got to start saving now. You got to count your pennies. You got to take your cans in. You got to do it all. If you want more, you got to what? Give more. You don't, you don't cap. You ain't getting nothing new. You capped out. You tapped out. And you working overtime. You... You capped out. You want to go higher. Somebody said, I want to go higher. Never giving God should be a burden. It should be a blessing that you have it to give God. It, you, you, we got to stop thinking that trials and tribulations is a burden. Trials and tribulations come to make you strong. All right? I have to teach up there. This week alone, I have done four sermons. I have to do Bible study. I have to do a funeral. I have to preach Sunday, and I have to turn in my stuff for Church United by Saturday. Four sermons, all right? And I still have a life and other things I need to do, uh, but too much is given, much is required. Sometimes God will let you go through a whole bunch to see if you can handle it. Look at your neighbor and say, you got to stop crying. Stop crying. You got to stop crying. You got to stop crying. Just do it. You got to stop crying. Always crying. Always, have you ever known people always crying that it don't work that way? You got to stop crying. Make some moves, all right? Somebody say stop crying. Get in the gym or something. Burn off some energy. Amen. So what we're going to talk about tonight, um, it's correct. Why I, well, matter of fact, I changed it yesterday. I want to get myself together. I need you to open up your Bible to the book of Exodus, Exodus 14 and 10. Um, I'm going to talk about some crybabies. Exodus 14 and 10. Amen. Exodus 14 and 10. 14 and 10. I'm glad to see so many people in Bible study tonight. Um, God is truly an amazing God. He's an amazing God. Um, so what we're going to talk about, so in our, um, uh, what we call it, early morning in the Word, we was talking about how to hear God. And somebody called me and said, I, I, I'm glad y'all talked about that because I really don't know how to hear God. I was like, you don't know how to hear God? Okay, well, well let me see. And it, th it throws me off. Yeah, and it throw you off because when you already have your Bible study and stuff planned, because I knew I had so much to teach, now I had to restudy this. Um, so, but God's going to bring it from another uh, angle. So I, I want to talk about um, just um, strategizing tonight. Because if you don't ever strategize anything, see, because this is what, this is what we do as people. Watch this. We already make, we make our plans, and I'm going to do this, and I'm going to do that. And this is how it's going to work. And we never have a plan B. Our plan A should be for God. Because if it's not for God, if, you're not, if you don't put God in it, it's always going to be a, 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 a bump or uh, something in the road. All right? And so that's why you have to hear God so you can stand on the promises of God. Ne never should you be uh, disconnected from God. Never, ever. And never, ever. Never, ever. I was teaching Manuel and uh, uh, Deacon Elder Manuel and Deacon Vonte outside when they was parking. Is that, and I, I teach this because I know this, and I hear God. 
it's, it's, it's a force field. You keep, a, you keep allowing people in your circle. And that's why things are getting so hard to work. You got, you got to shift what you're doing. There comes a time when you got to shift now what you're doing because you keep doing the same thing and expecting something different. You keep, you, so me and my wife, we've been grinding, so I haven't even been on the phone really in almost three weeks. I mean, for, for real, because when you're doing God, sometimes God has shut your ear, get ear gates to the world for you can hear him. You can, you can never talk to people every single day and text every single day and, and, and hear God. That, no way possible. There's no, there's no way possible. There comes a time when you got to shut down. It's just like turning your plate over. You got to shut down. You got to stop what you're doing for you, because it's going to take God for this next move in life. Because if not, you're going to always say, I don't. And what you're trying to do, you never have enough until you put the anointing on it. You, ne you never have enough until you put the anointing on it. Never, you, you can never do what you really want done by yourself. It won't work. So when people say, I ain't going to church anymore, I stop. Guess what? They'll never reach their potential. They'll never reach their destiny. It'll, it'll never work. You're going to always look at my neighbor have more than me. Why I'm not married. Why I don't have the car. Why I'm not driving. Why I'm. But when you get with God, when you start hearing God, you get comfortable with yourself. So I was sitting down today. I told my wife, I said, I'm very comfortable sitting right here. Then I tell you that this morning. We had just ate breakfast. I was sitting there. I'm very comfortable. Not because the phone was ringing, not because I had a bunch of money in the bank, not because, because I'm comfortable with me. Because when you have God in your life, you become comfortable. When you don't have God, you always worried about things. You're, when, you, when you have no God, things always become a problem. M money, you can have all the money in the world and still become a problem Without God. Have you ever seen people that have it easy and they complain about everything that don't have God? And God is trying to wake people up in this season. He's trying to wake them up. Look, I, hey, son, because I have to teach uh, Church of United that, uh, to the men that you are called to, for this. And people don't know what the, this is. You, you got to know I'm called for this. What is this? Because God has already ordained you and you're here. You have already, every person is ordained for something. I knew you in your mother's womb, the book of Jeremiah. And so here in the book of Exodus, chapter 10, I'm, I'm just going to read a little bit and then we'll, we'll move on to my, um, it says, and when Pharaoh drew, Pharaoh drew nigh, the children of Israel lifted up their eyes and behold, the Egyptians marched after them, and they were so afraid, and the children of Israel cried out to the Lord. Let them, let them cry babies again. Now, God just released them out of Egypt, just released them out of Egypt, came out of Egypt, out of Egypt. Now, how did you forget that God paid your mortgage last month, but you complaining this month? You forgot you got a check last week. Don't you know God going to bless you this week? Watch this. So they cried, uh, uh, and they so afraid, they cried unto the Lord. And they said unto the head man in charge, Moses, because there was no graves in Egypt, hast thou taken us away to die in the wilderness? All right? But... The, I could really preach this, but I, I leave that alone about the wilderness. Because they was prophesying, and they didn't even get in the wilderness yet. All right? So, watch this. Wherefore hast thou dealt thus with us to carry us forth out of Egypt? Is not this the world that we did tell thee in Egypt, saying, Let us alone that we may serve the Egyptians? For it had been better for us to serve the Egyptians 
than that we should die in the wilderness. That's, that's the spirit of fear. That's the spirit of fear. Because you get to a place in your life that it gets hard and you say, if I can just, I, I don't want to do this no more. Because, because now, you know, now you stop and you, 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 you taking on a spirit of fear and you're not letting God move you to, to this next level. Watch this. And, and, and Moses said, Moses said, verse 13, unto the people, fear ye not. All right, so now Moses is talking to thousands of people. Moses is the pastor. So Moses is trying to tell you, son, daughter, ma'am, sir, it's going to work out. So, but this is what Moses said. So you got to get around because everybody was in the same group together and everybody start fearing together. That's why in the group that you're in, you got to step out every now and then say, this is not what I want. This is not God. Y'all hear me? But because you've been around them so long, you start agreeing with them. Watch this. But Moses stepped out and said, stand still and see the salvation of the Lord, which he will show you today. For the Egyptians whom you have seen today, you will see them again, no, not just no more, but no more forever. So Moses, watch this. This is so good. Can you imagine that the army, the Egyptian army is behind you and Pharaoh. Now you've got to understand that the Red Sea is big because if you look at the news, the United States military are lining ships up through the Red Sea now. So the Red Sea is not small. You got aircraft carriers going through the Red Sea. It ain't small. And so you got this Red Sea in front of you and the Egyptian army behind you. Now you got to understand, Moses is led to the sea by God. Not leaning to his own understanding, not this. He's at the Red Sea by God. Now, some of us hear God. I'm going to teach this thing tonight. And it seems like that we thought we heard God because now you're at a place in your life where you are uncomfortable. But I told somebody on the phone today that God has finally got you to the place where he can use you because you got everything by yourself, but God stripped you this time because God want to do it right with you this time. And we always think that because we don't have and because we lost this and because we lost that, that it's the enemy. No, baby, God allowed that thing to happen. And so that, that, and watch this, Vontae. So now Moses at the Red Sea, the army is behind him. If somebody didn't hear God, they would say, that pastor don't know what he's doing. And you got to be careful of the naysayer. Because the naysayers had a group of people saying we should have stayed in Egypt and died. That's what, that's what, that's what you got to be careful with naysayers. You got you to be careful with them. Because they will have you not crossing the Red Sea. They will have you stuck in Norfolk, Virginia, never seeing the world. Y'all got to help me in here. So there's somebody in Germany that's ready to bless you, but because you're walking in the spirit of fear, you don't like airplanes, you might never go to Germany. Amen? So there's places, there's things that God wants you to do. Don't you know it's more than Chesapeake, Virginia? Don't you know it's more than Amazon in life? Don't you know it's more than Walmart? Don't, don't you know God really wants you to be a millionaire? But you walking in the spirit of fear, you stuck at the water, and you still crying about fair army. You said we should have stayed back there. Some people said we should have stayed at the at the uh, 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 storefront. Now he want a thousand twenty four dollars. Well, baby, I got God with me. If you don't, God gonna still provide. Y'all gotta hear me. I'm just throwing it out there for you, for you can get your blessing. Can I get an amen? 
I never seen the righteous forsaken or a seed begging for bread. You got to get to a place where you can try and trust God. Let me say it one more time. You got to get to a place in your life. We got half saying, I don't know how I'm going to do 1,024. And you got the other half saying, let me get my money together. Y'all about to help me in here. And so that's how God works. When you hear God, there's, there's no mistakes when you hear God. When, when you hear God, you go straight to the word, and the word will tell you if it's God or not. Am, am I helping y'all? Most people want to hear God's voice when they're facing a, a decision. If only God would speak to them and tell them which choice to make or which direction to embark upon, many people would claim to have heard God's voice saying, God led me to this. When in fact, it was simply your own thoughts and desire. Because we will get caught up in what somebody else is doing. And we'll get caught up in the hype. we get caught up in that. Ten years later, you haven't reached your destiny yet. Am I helping y'all? I'm trying to help somebody. So God, watch this. So, so everybody's claiming that God, that it's God when really you are learning, uh, leaning to your own understanding. The primary way that God speaks to us today is through his revealed written word. When you, when you talk to God and you get that in your spirit and, and you can get the revelation, then you just heard God. Tell somebody, I need a revelation of God. Because if you don't hear God, you will never move to this next level. I'm going to let y'all get comfortable at this church, but I, me and my wife was talking today. We know there's another church after this one. Can I get an amen? I, I know there's another house after that because I'm tired of going upstairs. Right or wrong? If I don't get me a 6,000 square foot, I ain't doing nothing because I serve a God who can do it. That's why you can't get caught up in what somebody else is doing. You about to get caught up in what God is doing in your life. Am, am I helping somebody? So, Romans 10 and 17 says, so then faith cometh by hearing. So somebody got to get in my ear. The right person and the right things must get in my ear. Because of faith cometh by hearing. And hearing comes by what? The word of God. Can you imagine if you keep getting the non-word of God in your ear? That's why your faith is shot now. Can I get an amen? That's why your stuff won't move now because you letting your cousin, sister, aunt, daddy get in your ear that don't talk God. So when you should be at that next level, you can't make it because you got damnation in your ear. But that's my cousin that's still the wrong spirit. Can I get an amen? And so that's why you got to get you some alone time and read the word of God for you can talk back to God. Can you imagine if God called you? Now I'm, I'm getting to my church tonight. Can you imagine if God called you on the phone? Babe, get my phone real quick. Right there. Thank you, sweetheart. So God is calling you on the phone. Bing, bing. Bing. I ain't, ain't answering that. This God. Be, because you know God going to ask you to do something. You got to say it, Bishop. You ne never do God call you not to anoint you. But God called you, watch this, because he have need of you. And some of us, God is calling right now I ain't answering this. I ain't, because I, I, know, I know God going to want me to tithe. I know God going to want me in Bible study. I know God going to want me in early morning prayer. So I'm, watch this. And, and God only call, he'll call you when he's going to bless you. Y'all right. just missed that. You missed that. You missed that. Samuel. Samuel, he couldn't, he, he, he didn't know God's voice. And that's how some of us are right now. God is calling your name, 
but you don't spend no time with God so you can't hear God. So Samuel was young and couldn't hear God. But when the leader told him, when he called you, tell him, here I am. Do you hear me? Somebody in your household got to say, here am I. Y'all got to help me in here. When you spend time with God, you can hear God. Just because I can, re what you land to say, boy, you can recite them scriptures. Just because I can recite scriptures don't mean I hear God. Because I can learn the Bible, but I got to live the Bible. I'm trying to help y'all real quick. Samuel, here am I, God. I'm right here. David, is there another, tell Jephro, is there another son in the back? Because the same one, watch this, I'm going to mess your mind up. The same one who almost couldn't hear God when he was young, almost missed God when he was old. Because Samuel said, watch this, Samuel said, it, I know it got to be this one. God said, that ain't, I didn't, you must have missed my voice. Because I didn't tell you to pick him. Keep somebody in the back. The same one who almost missed God when he was young, almost missed God's voice when he was older. Can I get an amen? So through your years from baby to 80, you're going to have to stay in tune with God. Because he used him when he was young, and he will use you when you get old. Because if you can hear God, God will extend some time on your life. Y'all got to help. I'm trying to help you in here. Tell your neighbor, I'm trying to hear the voice of God. Because only what you do for Christ is going to last. Somebody say, only what you do for God. Only what you do for God is going to last. So Moses get to the water. And the Bible says that they hear the army coming behind them. They hear him coming behind them. And you got to understand that, that the voice of God has to be louder than the voice of the enemy. Because the devil talks loud too. The voice of God got to be louder than the enemy. All right, let me take you back to the book of Genesis. Watch this. Well, I got to hear God. The Bible says that Adam and Eve heard God walking <laughs> through the garden. Y'all got to help me real quick. And if they wasn't in tune with God, they wouldn't have never heard God walking. You got God walking in your house. You tell me, babe, is that you? No, that's God walking around your house. Trying to, trying to help you real quick. So he was walking through the garden and because, see, God walks heavy. And you, and you so when, when God comes on the scene, Everything must change. Never can God enter into a place in your house, in your life, and you stay the same. Whenever God comes on the scene, y'all got to help me. Everything in your life, that's why you can tell if it's God or not. Because when God comes on the scene, your life going to automatically change. Oh, we got God in the old church, so we should have stayed in the old church. I got God in my old house. I should have stayed in my old house. I got God in my old car. I should have stayed in my old car. When God comes on the scene, everything changes. Somebody say everything changes. Everything in your life changes when God comes on the scene. When God is not on the scene, things get worse. I'm trying to, I'm trying to help you tonight. So watch this. So the primary way that a Christian hears God's voice is through reading and studying Scripture and then obeying and applying what the Scripture says. See, because, because once, you start, once you start reading, that, that, that's why folks say, I can't read. You know what I did today when I had started writing my sermon for Church United? I put it on Word and then I hit read. So it just started reading it back to me because I wanted to see how did it sound from a different voice. Y'all just missed that. Re you, you really just missed that. You got to see how it sound from a different voice. 
because you keep hearing yourself when you really need to hear God. See, God will tell you, yes, that's good, and no, that's bad. You tell your neighbor, I need to hear God in this. We keep moving before we even hear God. Tell your neighbor, you got to wait until God speak. The old preachers will tell you, if you ain't doing something, just do something. The new preacher going to tell you, wait until God speak to you. Can I get an amen? We keep moving before God speak. We, we always trying to get ahead of God. We always trying to figure this thing out before God. We trying to get ahead of God. You can never get ahead of God. Can I get amen? You can never get ahead of God. Watch this. And so when the spirit leaves, he is not imparting new information. Okay, there it go. As much as he is impressing or impressed with our hearts, the truth God has already revealed in Scripture and applying it to our situation. So when we read the word about our situation, it shouldn't be nothing new. It, it should be confirmation when somebody prophesies or somebody speak to you. See, if, if you don't want to talk God, God has some, oh, the Bible says that God used the donkey to talk. You got to be ready to talk. That's why you can't be fearful of God's word. Fearful people might not never get to the door that they need to get to. Speak those things that are not. Well, you're scared to talk. You might not never get there. What it took, it should have took two days. It's taking you 10 years. Am I helping y'all real quick? And so if a person says, God told me or the spirit led me to do such and such, and the action taken is contrary to scripture, we can be sure the person is mistaken. I ain't want to put like So we can be sure. So you hear God over here, but you still doing that, you a liar. Am I helping y'all real quick? Because it takes so much just to align yourself with God. Because once you get off track, what the enemy do is try to keep you out of bounds. Have you ever seen a football game when the receiver, the quarterback, drops back to throw the receiver the ball? And if the receiver runs out of bounds and come back in, he can't catch the ball. So what the devil is trying to do is keep you because you can't come back in and get your blessings. I'm trying to help somebody. You can't come back in. You got to wait till the next play. When is the next time God is going to bless you? Tell your neighbor, I just will stay in bounds and play the game. I'm trying to help somebody here. You keep running out of bounds when it don't look like it's going to work. You keep hiding when they're talking about you. You keep running when your money ain't right. You keep crying when they tell you never just stay in the game. God is going to bless you. So, so watch this. Another way to hear God, God's voice is to pray, but you got to ask for wisdom. And the problem with hearing God through wisdom is it might not be the answer that you want. See, we, 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 we look for God to come one way, but, but God always going to come his way, right, right or wrong. That's why God will allow you to go through some things. That's good, because, because, because when you come out, you would say out of your mouth, if it wasn't for the Lord on my side, where would I be? I, I, rem, I remember sleeping on my mama floor. Y'all got to help me in here. Y'all playing games. I, I remember sleeping in the in-town suites for a whole year. But when I went there, Vante, I came out with a bank full of money. I came up, then a mama. I came out with two cars. I came out with so many clothes, I had to put them in a storage. See, just because my situation didn't look right, God was still talking to me. And sometimes God got to get you by yourself. Why he leave me? God wanted to talk to you. 
Why they fire me? God wanted to talk to you. Why she leave me? God, why you think you're the only one thinking about church because God want to talk to you? Am I helping somebody in here? And so, watch this. And so I have to pray and ask for wisdom. If any, watch this, James 1 and 5. If any of you lacks wisdom, you should ask God who gives, watch this, this is good. This is for the ones who don't think God is talking to them. He says, God gives, you should ask God who gives generously to all without finding fault, my God, and it will be given to you. That's what the Bible says. When a Christian is facing difficult circumstances and need to hear from God, the Christian should ask for wisdom that God promises to give to all. We, and with wisdom comes patience because wisdom will teach you not to go in that dark alley. Only a fool can go into the alley when they see guns and dogs barking in there. I, I ain't going in there. I tell my wife all the time, there's some places I can't go and do because I have a calling on my life. Can I get an amen? I'm not super Christian, but I'm a, I have, I'm a wise Christian. Amen? I'm a wise Christian. When you become wise as a Christian, once a dog bites you one time, <clears throat> y'all, but I'm helping y'all here, you will never get the chance to bite me again. <laughs> Let me say it one more time. Y'all didn't catch that. Once the boogeyman bites you one time and you wise, the boogeyman will never get me again. Can I get an amen? Because that's what the boogeyman do. He gets you. Right or wrong? That's what the boogeyman do. He gets you. And so you have to ask God for wisdom because you don't have time to keep playing with the boogeyman. Because your destiny requires all of your time and all of God's time. And you keep playing with the boogeyman. You done spent 40 years with the boogeyman. The boogeyman ain't changed yet. She ain't changed yet. He ain't changed yet. And you keep spending all your time with the daggone boogeyman. And the boogeyman got something for you. Y'all ain't hearing me. I'm just preaching. I'm the bishop. Watch this. And so, <laughs> in this day of self-proclaimed, I'm talking about COVID. Well, I, I, I got, I, I'm feeling good when I write. In this day of self-proclaimed prophets and the promotion of this new revelation. Am I helping y'all? Watch this. From God, people often mistake the voice of God for their own thoughts or their own suggestion of other people. So there's new religions out there. There's new prophets out there. There's, there's new, there's new. I'm, 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 I, I want to help y'all real quick. You'll know them by their fruit. I, I ain't got to argue with you. What you working with? You understand what you're working with? Watch this. So if you are hearing God's voice, then the message will always be. I'm going to go back and say it again. If you are hearing God's voice, see, when you hear God's voice, sin is not in it. I throw my mic right through that water right there. When you hear God's voice, sin is not in it. It's not in it. God going to always lead you in the right direction. Sin is not in it. If you, if you say, um, I don't know if I'm going to do this. This don't sound right. Well, it ain't right. Can I get an amen? It, it ain't right. Watch this. So if you are hearing God's voice, then the message will always be in accord with Scripture. It's, al it's always going to be in accord with with scripture. There's not no new Bible. From Genesis in the beginning to Revelations, amen, 
is for you too. <laughs> Let me say it again. From Genesis in the beginning to Revelations, amen. That's why we say amen. Because that means that it's done. That there's not no new Revelation part two. There's not no second Genesis and three. That there's not no fifth Timothy and eight. It ain't none of that. Genesis in the beginning to Revelations, amen. Somebody said, that's it. That, that, that's your life. So if you want to hear God, you got to get in there. Stop crying and get into your word. Right around. Am I helping y'all? Somebody, somebody just say amen. amen. You just revelation me. Amen. Amen. And so people often want to hear a specific word from God when he has already spoken in a general sense. Everybody wants something audible, something what God is saying. Read your word and figure it out for yourself. That's why we go to these seminars to, to some of these false prophets and they're taking all your money and you never get blessed from it because you don't know the word. Because you want, you want some, ooh, they, they got a prophet. They, get, they got the prophet coming. They got the, they got, you better know that word for yourself. True story. I ain't going to name them. Somebody went to a, uh, um, a, um, a service. And the pastor said, hey, sir, God told me, watch this, that you broke. You know what I'm talking about. That you broke. You ain't got no money in your pocket. And he's going to bless you with money. Then the man had a stack of hundreds in his pocket when the prophet said. This is a true story. This is a true story. Now, suppose the prophet would have said, go get your bank card, put 1500 in there, and God going to bless you. But you know what the man told the prophet? You wrong, because I got a pocket full of money. And what sat down? Am I right or wrong? I'm trying, to, I'm trying to tell you, you about to know your word. Because it can sound like God. It can walk like God. And it can shout like God. But it ain't God. Y'all better help me in here. Watch this. So, this is why you have to get in tune with God. Because God know all about you. In the book of Jeremiah 29 and 11, it says, The Lord makes it clear his intentions for you and I, for I know the thoughts that I think towards you, says the Lord. Thoughts of peace and not evil to give you a future and a hope. That's what he said. So God already know when he, when he, when he created you, there's a destiny that's set up for you. I, I got to park right here. See, when God birthed you, when, when God blew breath in you, there's a destiny that's set up for you. And we, we will allow the enemy, Philistines, come in and tear us apart and get us off track. That's why sometimes being alone is good. Y'all got to hear me. Now, you can't complain while you're alone. You got to hear God when you're alone. Can I get amen? Because once you get in tune with God, he going to give you what you need. And once you get what you need, he going to give you what you want. Because if you can work with what you need, he'll bless you with what you want. He's that type of God. Now, you got you to gotta work God. Now, you got you to gotta be a good steward. You got to know that you, you, he came to this world not to be served, but to serve. Now, now you got to get to the place where you serve. You can't, you can't come in walking with the big dogs and walk way past that paper. Can I get an amen? You got to serve, and you got to serve with a good heart. All right? My, I looked at my wife yesterday. What you doing? I'm typing. What you doing? I'm studying. What you doing? I'm typing. What you doing? I'm studying. What we going to eat today? Let's just, let's just cook all them pork chops and eat pork chops for breakfast and eat pork chops for dinner. Because when you're doing God's work, you ain't got time to figure out what you're eating. 
You, you got to just make sure that what you're doing is right. You, I, you ain't got time to figure out what you eating and how you doing it. Because if you gave me some pot of meat and crackers, I would have been good. And so I'm going to give you these two points and I'm three points and I'm out. So when you're trying to hear God, watch this. Number one, you got to check your receiver. Have you ever seen a football game where the man said, we're going to do a, a slam? And have you ever seen a quarterback? See, what the quarterback don't do, Pop, watch this. He's not waiting for the receiver to turn. And a professional, there's a different lead. The, the, the linebackers are just as fast as the receivers. They got 340-pound linemen that can run like a running back. So what the quarterback and the receiver have to do is know, once I do six steps, I'm going to cut. So by the time the receiver takes three steps, the quarterback automatically throwing. And know that when he takes that six, six step a turn, bam, the ball hit him there. That's how God wants you. Know that when you turn, I'm throwing a blessing right there. That every time you turn around, there's a blessing come. Stop talking about, I'm going to stop running. I'm going to stop doing God. Don't you know if you keep running that there's a blessing coming your way? Tell somebody, I got to keep running. I got to know. You, you got to know. The problem is you don't know the plays of God. I wish above all things that you may prosper. And be, you you got to know the plays of God. You don't know the playbook of God. Cast all your cares upon him for he cares for you got to know the playbook of God. Watch this almost done. So check the receiver. And you will seek for me and find me when you search for me with all your heart. That's Jeremiah 29 and 13. That when you seek after God, you're going to find God. But there's so many distractions that comes in your life. That th that anybody here got any distractions? Every time you turn around, you ain't got enough money. You got to... Every time you turn around, distraction, distraction, distraction. And the hardest thing to, to fight, watch this, is not the devil but your own flesh. Because flesh ain't no joke. Because once you do flesh a long time, watch this, it go from flesh to a stronghold. Am I, am I helping y'all? Now you need a whole ceremonial root city to get out of what you in. Have anybody ever wanted to get out of something and couldn't get out of nothing? You might, get a, you might have a stronghold. You might have a stronghold. That's why you got to lay out when nobody's watching you. God, I'm laying out. I can't get over her. I can't get over him. I'm going to let because I know he's killing me and she's killing me. I know he ain't no good for me. God, I got to get off this job, but it's the only way I feel like I can pay my bills. <laughs> Am I helping y'all? But tell your neighbor, with God, all things are possible. See, if you just trust God in this season, with God, all things are possible. I'm going to leave you, and I'm still going to make it. I'm going to quit the job and still going to get blessed. Am I helping y'all here? You can't make people, places, and things your God. Somebody said you got to check the receiver. Number two, watch this. Once you check the receiver, you got to find the right frequency. You remember the old TVs that had the antennas? And if you turn the antenna just right, that thing will come in, boy, and play like never before. That thing will play like never before. But some of y'all are trying to hear God with your antennas down. And that's why, that's why you keep getting static in your life. <laughs> I'm messing with y'all. Watch this. They know his voice. How do you locate the frequency of God use, uh, 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 using to speak to you? Most often we miss his frequency because we tune in to hear some huge revelation when in fact he is given simple instructions. We want God to speak so low. Hey! You got to be quiet and hear God. The problem why you can't hear God, you too loud. If you be quiet, God can show you something. But I forgot, you know it all. Y'all better help me in here. So most often we miss his frequency. Watch this. Number three, we're getting out of here. You must learn to discern the voice of God. You, you got to know when it's your mama, your daddy, your cousin, your job, or whatever. You got, 
if, if, my, if my wife at Bush Gardens and she holler, and I'm on the other side, Reggie, I know it's my wife. Watch, because I spend time with my wife. The reason why you don't know it's God, I got some preachers in here, because you don't spend no time with God. And we keep looking at the easy way out when God talks. It ain't, it ain't always the easy way out. Moses, go take the people, but you got to get to the Red Sea, and, um, and, and his arm is behind. We always want the easy way out. When it get hard, we start complaining. You should have kept me in Egypt. The same ones who complained did not even make it to the, 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 um, the promised land. That group did not make it because they kept complaining when things got hard. Don't you know when things get hard, that's when God is ready to show up? When, th when, when things seem impossible, that's when God works with the impossible. He, he is the impossible. He, he works with the impossible. Things got, but you got to line yourself up to know that it's going to work out for your good. So you got to line yourself up. It's going to work. That's why sometimes you got to stay home and shut up. Get off that phone. Get off that Facebook. For what? I ain't been on that phone in almost three weeks. Because you got to purge yourself. You got to clean yourself. Because you are not strong enough to handle everybody, everybody. You think you are. Last one, watch this. Learn to discern the voice of God. Number four, line it up with his word. Because once you hear the voice of God, I got all scripture is inspired by God. So once you hear the voice of God, you got to line it up with the scripture. And if you ain't living it, I'm, up. I'm gone. Then that might not be God. Because anybody who hears the voice of God cannot do the same thing they used to do. Because the voice of God going to instantaneously Watch this. When you check your receiver, find his frequency, learn to discern his voice, and line up what you hear with his word, hearing God's voice won't be an occasional event, but it's become a lifestyle. Can y'all clap your hands for God? Tell your neighbor, I want to hear God. Tell him I'm against the Red Sea and the enemy is behind me. But God told me to go this way. And with God, all things are possible. Can y'all clap for God? My God. Oh, my, God. <laughs> my God. So that's good. We just want to bless the name of the Lord. Um, don't forget, Church of United, we have people that's not even members of the church that have already paid um, to churches at night. Matter of fact, I have to go on Zoom. Well, they have a Zoom at 10 o'clock this Saturday. I can't be there because I have to do the eulogy of our aunt, so I won't even be up there, but I need all my men who are not at the funeral to make sure you go up there. We have people already paid. Um, we got a van ready to roll, so we're going up there together. Amen. If we get more than 15 people, then we got to get enough van. All right, but we have a lot of people going. Make sure when you go up there, make sure you order your shirt because they will be wearing, wearing shirts, I think, on Saturday. All right, um, I, I got some bad news and good news. I'm preaching at 9 o'clock at night. <laughs> I go to sleep at 7. <laughs> All right, so I'm preaching at 9 o'clock at night. Uh, matter of fact, I will have the itinerary Sunday for every, uh, every, the per people who are going. Um, what, what it, so we're not, we're not even jumping off to 7 o'clock Friday. Give us a chance to get up there, get our room, eat the whole nine yards. Because you got to get away. You got your own room. And you want to hear God. You want to hear God. You, if you want to go, you got to ask God. God so you got to go to God. God, provide my need. Get, provide my need. So we're doing that. Um, Church United. We, so I have I had to study today for Bible study. 
um, I started writing my stuff for Church United, then the funeral, then Sunday. But it's just God, so I had to do four sermons in this amount of time. But it's God, God would, he, he would never put no more on you than you can bear. You understand what I'm saying? So God will never put no more on you than you can bear. Um, so I'm getting ready to work with the junior deacons too. Once I get back from Church of United, we're going to start having meetings with our junior deacon. Um, that, how many I got in here? If you're a junior deacon, wait, raise your hand. Cedric. Okay, said. Okay. So we get rid of um, Camonte. Matter of fact, um, I went and bought Camonte a guitar yesterday because he can play the lead guitar and he's going to be practicing. All right. So, but you got, sometimes you got to, you got to bless other people, not, not just because, but that'll keep them focused. And we, we can't keep talking without blessing. Right or wrong, we can't. You, you got to get, once your child get to the age of like 13 and 14, they, they going on everything they learn. They, they going on everything they learn. It's hard, it's hard to pull a 13-year-old back when he's kissing and hugging. Am I, am I helping y'all? Girl, oh, girl or oh boy, the girls are just as strong as the men now. Will you date me? What? That why I supposed to ask you that? Right or wrong? And so we we have we have to we have to bring it all back. But I want to thank God for so many being in Bible study. That I'm, I'm gonna let everybody come on, y'all. You don't have this many people in no Bible study. Come on, man. All right. So we have a lot going on. We have our partners, new partners. We have a lot of people, man. We have so many, and I know. So God is truly blessing us. Um, we get ready to do the entrepreneur class and. Uh, learn how to buy a house. How how you buy a house? How 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 do you start your own business? Do do I get a loan from the bank or do my business have credit? We we're gonna teach a whole bunch of that. Just just I, I, we're gonna teach what we know, and we'll bring other people in here to help you because you don't always have to struggle. You don't always have to be broke. God said, "I wish above all things." That's the word. Amen. So that's what we are doing. Don't forget, January the 1st, we're jumping. We, we are having the, when is the Christmas play? December the 17th. We're having it here on a Sunday. It's going to be the whole Sunday. They're going to throw down. All right. Don't forget to bring your candy uh, for the kids. We, we, we have a lot going on. We, we have, we have mega, mega, mega mentality, mega ministry. We have a lot going on. All right. Um, so December 17th. We have to play. Make sure you sign up back there. January the 1st, New Year's Eve. We coming in here walking on the devil head. Not January. Watch this. What did I tell you that God can do in 2024? Restore everything. He can restore. Start off by giving a big gift. God loves gifts. He, he loves sacrifice. You got to start saving your money right now. Why, why you have to be the one to come in here on New Year's and say, I don't have it? You don't want to keep being that person. You don't, you don't want to keep being that person. I got tired of going to my old church when I had just started going to church smelling like smoke. I said, I'm tired of smoking. I'm tired of getting around these guys. They high-fiving me and they shouting, and I'm shouting and smoking. I was shouting and smoking. But there's a change that must come in your life. There's a change that must come in your life. I got tired of running and smoking. That I said, God, you know what? I, I'm tired of playing you. I want to be like you. All right? I want to be like you. God has opened up doors. I'm going to say this on the I'm out of here. Don't worry about people who won't accept you to do certain things with them. God is just blocking some things from you. I felt that in my spirit today. Some things are not made for you to do because God is blocking it from you. So when they don't invite you, go home and clap your hands because God is blocking something from you. Amen. This is a season where God is trying to use you for real. Father God, we thank you, we adore you, and we honor you. We give your name the glory, God, for there is no God like you. God, we thank you for this Prince of Peace Praise Center, God, that you anoint, God. 
that, you, that, you, that your anointing fall fresh in this place, God. That you give us traveling mercies back to our house. But even in our cars, God, talk to us, God. God, bless us like never before, God. Use us, God. God, we thank you in advance for the blessings that have been stored up for us, God. Open every door and every window, God. God, we will give your name the honor and the glory. We will scream out of our mouth if it wasn't for God on our side. Where will we be? And God, we thank you, God. God, I ask you for strength, not just for me, but for my wife and for your church parishioners, God. For they don't belong to me, God. They belong to you. Strengthen them, God. For you know every problem, every situation that they are going through. God, use them even in their mess. Bless them, God. Restore the joy in their life. And for that, we do say thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.